Well, welcome to the show. Today, we have a, a person who describes himself as a true patriot. Um, this person represents the EAA, and I'll let him tell us a little bit about uh, that organization and what they do. So tell me about this Enforcers Association of America. What uh, what are you about? What we do is we basically, and I'll just put this in a nutshell, we blindly support law enforcement and military. Let's just, let's just be straightforward about it. We support them. They've got a tough job and we're going to do whatever it takes. Are they perfect? Of course they're not perfect. Do we care? Of course we don't care. I mean, we, we support them Blindly. I, that's the only way to put it. These guys are putting their lives on the line. And for that, they, they deserve some leeway. And, and we're here to stop the news media from harassing cops for, for those few cops that do their, their job a little bit wrong by choking someone and killing them on accident or trying to send these guys to prison when them and their partners are out there uh, on the lines every single day fighting for our freedoms. It's it's interesting to hear your perspective because so frequently you only hear words like, you know, a mother's love that no matter how unattractive her child might be, she's going to love them anyway. And no matter what they do, that mother's love will all, always be there. And it sounds like you almost feel that way about the uh, government or not the government, the, the nation government, whatever. They're enforcers, the people who use force. Is that an accurate analogy? Let me just put it again, real blunt. This mother right here supports them period and and i would ask that um and, and we're not uh, held to fcc rules or anything but i would ask that you um not use foul language uh if you would extend that courtesy to me i would i would appreciate that yes sir i apologize i'm very sorry about that that will not happen again this entire show i promise that's that's okay um so there are when we th talk about enforcers i mean when we get right down to it uh, are you referring to the people who enforce the laws? Are you just talking about law enforcement? Or you mentioned military also. So is it any law that any politician makes? Well, first off, I mean, we all go to the polls, at least, you know, a good portion of us. And when I say a good portion, I think like maybe what, 10 to 30 percent of the people in this country vote. And we're going to the polls. We're picking those people to do those jobs. And we've got to support that. We have got to support the laws that are put in. Look, look how many lives have been saved for? For our government, forcing people to put seatbelts on, put helmets on. And I mean, you know, it's just it's the right thing to do. And if we're going to elect these officials, they win. They're the ones who get to make the decisions for us. And let's be honest, we really don't need or I don't have the time to make my own decisions. I don't have the time to go start making up laws to throw people in prison for for, you know, having a joint on them in public. And if these guys that we vote in are they're elected. We need to support them. And we have those enforcers in this country to make sure that those politicians stay in power and that their laws are continued to be pushed through and supported and enforced. Now, and there are a lot of statistics. Every time there is a poll done, and this is not a left or right thing, but every time there's a poll done and people are asked what profession or what group of people do you trust the least? And do you think have the, the worst intent? It is always politicians. It's the lawmakers. And that goes from county commissioners up to governors and, and congressmen. It goes to all politicians. And do you still feel that it's okay for people to use force to enforce rules made by a group like that? I'm going to ask you a question. Why isn't it okay? I mean, our country has been founded on force. We have we came in here, we pushed the Indians away. I mean, those idiots, come on. Let's just, I mean, them mother, oh, excuse me, them nice folks. Thank you. Uh, those folks, you know, they weren't really doing much. We came in here, we pushed them out. And now we've got to keep this the way we want it to be. And then, oh, the only way we're going to keep our freedoms from whether it's those Indians or or any other type of people coming back to take our land from us, we've got to use force. Okay. And so speaking of force, there are some statistics that uh, over the last year, 2021, that there were something like 129 uh, law enforcement personnel in the United States killed in the line of action. And at the same time, there were 1,039 people that were killed by law enforcement. And what do you make of those numbers, those statistics? Well, I think we know that law enforcement, they aren't the ones perpetuating violence. It's the horrible people out there that are. And 
I mean, just because they carry guns, they show up to your house, they knock on your door, they kick your door in or whatever it might be. They're, you know, they're not the ones initiating the force. It's the people that are in their homes, minding their own business. When those cops come in, of course, they're going to be scared. They're going to start shooting at the cops. And it's horrible for those cops to have to die. They're, they're, they're supporting, you know, they're supporting our freedoms. They're keeping the bad guys away from us. I am able to walk down the street by myself at night alone without having to worry about getting jumped because these cops are doing that hard job and they're sacrificing their lives. I mean, the fact that we lost a thousand American citizens who may or may not have been involved in a felony at the time that they were killed, that's not as big of a deal as the fact that we have lost these hundred plus heroes, the heroes without capes. That's I, I, Heroes without capes is the best way to put it because I'll tell you what, even when they're off duty, they're working. Even when they're off duty, they're looking to maybe save someone. And, and that's important. Okay. And so speaking of off duty, um, we wanted to talk about, there was a study done um, some years ago, I think uh, eight years ago or so uh, in the Atlantic, it came out and I'll just read one excerpt. Uh, as the National Center for Women and Policing noted, uh, two studies have found that at least 40% of police officer families experience domestic violence in contrast to 10% of families in the general population. And what do you make of that? Uh, report. Uh, I got one word for it. Bullshit. Uh, and I would ask that uh, again that you not use. Uh, oh, geez, I'm sorry. And I thought it was that other word that I used. I wasn't supposed to use again. I won't use that word either. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> it's it's just malarkey. Is malarkey okay to say these days? Because yeah. here's the thing: uh, when we go to war in other countries, Sometimes we bomb the wrong little cities and towns, and sometimes these kids and 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 women they get bombed and they die. Just, but we're 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 pushing our freedoms on those other countries. We got to make sure that that you know they're doing the same things that we do, and they're they're just the they're kind of the sacrifice. And it's the same thing with police families; they just have to sacrifice a little. It's not much, you know, getting knocked around. Heck, how many of us men? When we were boys, we're pushed around a little bit by our fathers because, you know, we didn't, you know, we didn't clean our rooms the right way or, or, you know, whatever. We didn't mow the lawn the right way. You get smacked around a little bit. Well, that's all part of growing up. Well, these women and these children and law enforcement families just need to realize that they've got to sacrifice just like their, just like their father or their husband do. Their father and husband are out there keeping us free, getting shot at. Like you said, a hundred and some cops died. I mean, yeah, there's, I don't know how many millions of people in this country, a hundred cops died and those families are just going to have to deal with it. Okay. Um, well, very provocative things that you're saying. Um, so the 40%, well, wait a second, you're saying I'm provocative. I'm here to make sure that we stay free. So, I mean, if we don't have these enforcers protecting Americans, how in the world are we going to be able to stay free? So I'm not the only thing that's being provoked is those news media people making cops look bad or these these. How about that? There's some clowns that go around there and videotape cops and they try to entice cops into doing mean things and they video them making cops look bad. Those guys ought to be shot in the head. Point blank. Okay. So, and I, and I do want to say that when I said controversial, I am trying to separate. We are a, a talk show. We talk to various patriots who love our great nation. And um, I just want to say that there are some things, you know, I'm not calling for violence. I want to make sure that it's, it's known that this show is not calling for violence against, and I, and I assume you're speaking of the, is it Jim or, or James Freeman? Uh, the nah, YouTube. Guy, I'll tell you what, that's, well, I don't believe in violence either, unless it's our enforcers making sure that we protect ourselves. But that, that guy, I'll tell you what, if I was around him, I'd, I'd slap him, I tell you. There'd be an exception. Um, yeah. And then there there has been a, uh, I don't know, an argument that the statistic that I read or the, the report that there were 40% um, of law enforcers you know, kind of are, are abusive to their family. There was an argument that that was sometimes that wasn't like horrible violence. They weren't stabbing them or anything. Do you see a difference in different types of violence if it's uh, really serious or it's a little bit lighter? Yeah. I mean, I think if you got to smack, you know, smack her around a little bit because she didn't have, 
I mean, these cops, they work all different types of hours. If their women can't make sure that they've got their breakfast or pack them a little lunch if they're going to work or be quiet in the house when they're sleeping during the day because they worked at night or something like that. I mean, they got to be put in their place at some point because if these men aren't able to get out there and do their jobs efficiently because of what's going on at home, because those women are, are harassing them or bothering them, those women are, need to get put in their place. And those kids, too, if they aren't going to school, doing what they're told and, you know, they're not being perfect, they got the laws got to be laid down on them. And, you know, if 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 cops are able to lay down the law outside of their home, they may as well be able to do it inside the home. I don't know why cops don't have qualified immunity uh, in domestic situations either. You know, they have all of this type of stress and they can't they can't even relieve any of the stress when they get home. Now, I have to say, it almost sounds like you're talking out of the 1950s, and I don't mean that to be offensively, but you're you're saying some things that I think you're, I hope you're joking about, that it's okay to put them in their place and uh, be rough with them. Is that, I, I mean, I know that that's what really happens, I, evidently, in 40% of the situations, but you support that? The uh, Enforcers Association of America supports that? Well, yeah, I, I look when cops are able to drive down the street and see a group of, of adult American citizens talking all on a street corner and maybe it's a bad neighborhood, as some people would call it. Maybe it's not. And these cops want to rush up on them, throw them on the hood and pat them down for our safety. Of course, why aren't they able to to throw around their family members a little bit for our safety, too? Hmm. I, exactly. You don't. Yeah, you have to pause about that because there's no real excuse not to. <laughs> Yeah, I laugh all you want, but I'll tell you what, if there's nothing more important in this country than than our enforcers protecting us, you know, we man, we've all got to give a little. OK, that's why I have no problem making sure I don't carry a gun in certain states, making sure that I wear my seatbelt. I put my hat on or my my helmet on when I'm riding, riding my motorcycle, you know, that I make pay all my taxes, all that stuff. We have got to obey and follow directions. And again, there's no exception for cops families. If they're not going to obey and follow the directions from our enforcers, then, well, I think we all know what's going to happen. And apparently 40% of these idiots that live with cops aren't doing it right. They're messing up. And that's why they've got to get a little bit of a beat down. And I, you know, I, I, I do think it matters. Like, you know, I don't think most of these cops are throwing their, their wives through walls or windows and, and putting them in intensive care, or killing them. In fact, I don't even see the studies where cops are killing their family members. No. And if they are smacking them around a little bit, well, that's obviously not a life and death situation. So okay. what's the real problem? Okay. So if, if uh, you know, what do they say? No blood, no foul or, or something like that. Is that kind of your, but, but isn't it, isn't there something, you know, emotional abuse? If somebody is, doing the Sam Kinison yelling, screaming in the face and frothing at the mouth. And even if they're not touching, isn't that abusive to a, to a well, woman? Who's no blood, a no person? harm or no blood, no harm. Or what, what's the other term? Um, man, I don't know. I just, I just think that, that, you know, toughen up. That's all I got to say is toughen up sticks and stones. Okay. So a little bit of yelling isn't going to matter. And if they're, you know, yelling at them. Okay. So they're demeaning them a little bit, but, you know, people need to toughen up and it starts in the house, in the home. Thanks for listening to part one. Uh, if you'd like to listen to part two of this parody interview with the Enforcers Association of America, please look in the description and click on the link. Hey, if you'd also be willing to give us a thumbs up and subscribe, that would be great as well. If you're enjoying this content, we'll have more for you.
I think the police unions are a great buffer because they make sure that you don't just start charging people that are cops or, or are military uh, for domestic violence when maybe there really wasn't even that bad. Like I said, no harm, no foul. No, if they don't die, it doesn't really matter. And so these these unions are able to make sure that they don't um, that they don't just get railroaded and that they're all of their rights are protected, too. You know, they've got extra rights that they need to have uh, as police officers. You know, they need to be able to, um, you know, push the line a little bit. And sometimes they get caught pushing the line and that's when they need the protection because they're doing it for a reason. And again, we're too, you know, I have so much respect for our enforcers because I got other things to do. I don't have the time to go out there and protect this country. And they do, and they need to have some leeway. And those unions are really able to protect them. Again, they're, they're doing one of the hardest jobs in the country. I know people will say, oh, well, more people die from, you know, collecting the trash or or electric telephone line people or something out there, you know, have dangerous jobs. But no, it's it's the enforcer. Our enforcers have the most dangerous jobs. You know, they're fighting a war outside their house and inside their house. Because I'll tell you what, there are some families out there that don't support the cops that live in their households. And and that's why those cops need to be a little bit more heavy handed and and expect the respect that they deserve. And, and again, fortunately, these police unions are able to help with that as well. Help help the courts or or the, the department they work for understand that these guys are under a lot of stress. Sometimes they got to blow off some steam. Sometimes steam looks like a smack smacking the old lady around or something and, you know, putting her in her place, making sure that those kids are are doing exactly what they're told and not having the freedom to of choice uh, in the household because these enforcers know what they're doing. Okay. Um, and again, I'm no part of, of what our guest today is saying is necessarily the opinion of this talk show or the network. Well, I'll tell you around. it ought to be. Well, I understand it ought that to be that's everyone's your... opinion, and that's what we're pushing for at EAA. Everyone needs to be supporting our cops this way. I understand that that that, that is your perception. Um, so you are also a, a big supporter of the government in general, the nation's government. Uh, and the reason I ask that is, as some people know, um, on our show, we do kind of question the status quo and say, hey, um, how necessary is government for society to exist? Might we not be able to have a better society without uh, a government telling us what to do and stealing our money through taxes? Yeah, you know, I mean, again, let's go back to these Indians. There wasn't a government when the Indians were running this place and they were just make, you know, making a mess out of it. They were killing buffalo and and living in tents. And now we've got now we've got, you know, cities, we've got planning, we've got roads and highways, we've got infrastructure. Uh, yeah, I mean, we pay some taxes for it, but who cares? I mean, you know, I, if you figure it out, we're I probably when you start looking at all the taxes from all the angles, 70 percent isn't too much to pay for freedom of every dollar that we make 70 cents on every dollar that we make is not, to, is not too much to pay for freedom and throwing some of that money towards the enforcers is absolutely very important. They, they need to know that, uh, that we support them on every level, including through our money. And as far as our government goes, it ain't going to work any other way. We just got to accept it. There's no other, there's no other way. And yes, yes, I'm libertarian leaning because I don't like, well, there's really not much I don't like about the government, but there's sometimes they'll do something wrong. And, and I just don't like that. And that's why I'm a libertarian. But we got to keep voting. We got to keep making sure that uh, we give these enforcers as many rights as we can. And I tell you, that qualified immunity stuff is some of the best stuff out there. And the fact that we could kind of, kind of, mm, make the constitution a little more pliable to support our enforcers and make sure that they're able to, you know, kick doors in just based on, on, on their gut feelings and things like that. That's important because that's, what's going to keep us safe. And the politicians that we elect need to make sure that they blindly support our law enforcement officers too. Okay. Some, some strong opinions. Um, I'm going to read something that I saw on uh, the EAA's uh, social media. Okay, let's hear it. Okay. Uh, 
Currently, every single complaint that is filed against an officer winds up stressing the cop out even more. We are fighting for a bill that will allow police unions to pay off people who make accusations and issue apologies to them without the cop even knowing that he had been complained about. And when I read that, I thought, well, is this that kind of ruins the point because then the officer won't be able to realize what they did wrong and fix it in the future. Um, is that your position? Yeah, I, I, of course it is. I think that um, why bother these these hardworking enforcers with minimal things? Most civilians lie anyway. Most civilians just make stuff up and there's no reason to mess with these cops They've got other things to do. They're trying to keep their family in line. As we know, 40% of them, it's a tough job for them to keep their family in line. And they've got other things to do. They've got reports to write, gear to purchase. You know, a lot of these cops have to purchase their own protection gear with their own money. And that's that's an atrocity. I mean, when they wanna when they wanna buy more, more toys or tools to protect us. And they've got to use their own money. That's that's disgusting to me. In fact, that's the bill I would like is that they have a fund. It would have to be billions of dollars, but a fund that we could give our law enforcers to use anytime they need more money. Now, that money could be used for gear. That money could be used to help them with with legal defenses when they are accused, wrongly accused of messing with the public or messing with their own family members. And you know, it, it'll just help continue our support, our, our blind support that they deserve from us. And, you know, as we're even talking about this, I think that the um, that the EAA is going to grow and grow and grow. And the more that we can can get support for our enforcers, the better it's going to be. How nice would it be to not have to turn on the news and listen to listen to uh, cops being accused of choking people out until they die? How nice would that be? And I think one of the other things we should do is stop the media from being able to do that. I mean, yeah, it's freedom of speech, but is it freedom of speech when they're trying to start a riot? Okay, I don't I... think so. I think it's a danger. And I think too much information and talking negatively about our law enforcement officers is absolutely the wrong thing to do. Okay. And you would be willing to see legislation of that nature. Um... I'm going to probably start writing it after we get finished. Okay. Well, you're pretty serious about that. Um, and that, that kind of brings up something that some people are concerned about, that when a, a police officer is accused of misconduct, it is their own department, other government employees who are on the same team, who uh, are, are the ones that investigate them, and usually they're found to be innocent. Um, well, how, how do you feel about that? I think that the ideology of um, we have we have investigated ourselves and found that we have done nothing wrong is absolutely the right way to go about it. But, but how can that be? It, it almost sounds like this. And again, I don't mean to be offensive, but it seems like so many of the things that you're talking about in this interview are they're, they're almost make me suspect that you're you're putting me on, that this is satire. Are, are you serious about these things or? Well, let's you... look at it this way. Do you, when we go to the polls to vote, that's not satire. We're voting seriously. We're seriously deciding who wants to, who we want to represent us. When we we then see that we win, right? There's nothing bad about that. And now what we have done is we've established people. We have voted in people that are going to do what we want them to do. They're going to make up laws that maybe keep us home when there's invisible deadly diseases outside they're going to have us shut our businesses for our safety and those enforcers are going to are going to enforce those laws and those are important laws and those are laws that we chose our representatives to put in to effect and now we need to support our enforcers because because they're in effect there's nothing satire about this and I'll tell you what it's a life and death situation those 100 plus cops that were killed that's horrible absolutely horrible i'm not worried about the 1000 plus free civilian Americans that were killed. I'm worried about those cops that were doing their job that were killed. Okay. And it, it is, it is almost a, what is it? A thousand to 100 ratio. Um, that's yeah, it is an interesting statistic. Um, the police officers, some people have been concerned that police officers who are found guilty of doing something that 
a, a civilian would have a very harsh penalty for, they are suspended. And suspended is the big punishment. And uh, then, you know, that you hear these reports of the cops are, are joking around about how happy they are. They got extra vacation days. They're getting paid for their time off. They're going jeeping. They're going to Vegas. Um, uh, is that appropriate? Or don't you feel there is a place for punishment of an employee who does something improperly and, and violates someone's rights? I'm just going to go back to the basics of of what the EAA stands for, and that is to blindly support our enforcers by any means necessary. And if they still need money when when they're being accused, and they're probably being wrongly accused, I mean, most of these people out there deserve it. Most of the people that have force put on them, they deserve it. They were probably in the wrong place at the wrong time, and shame on them. Too bad. And, you know, yeah, once, once they have some time off, uh, whether it's disciplinary or because they're under an investigation or whatever, they should still be paid. I mean, most cops go out and they do buy Jeeps and boats and things like that, but they work so hard, they never have time to use it. So what more can a department do than allow them to continue to be paid so that they can use those toys, go out and have fun while these anti-cop and cop-hating groups decide if if they've done something wrong? They should absolutely continue to be paid. They deserve it. They've put their lives on the line. They put their families at risk and, and we need to do everything we can to support them. Okay. Um, you don't well, hear much satire in that now, do you? It sounds like you're very serious about what you are saying. Um, and some of the things I find it hard to believe, but uh, one last question, I'm just going to kind of bring in an anecdotal thing. A friend of mine in Texas um, purchased a new Corvette and took it out and was, uh, you know, just kind of having fun driving around, not endangering anyone and was treated absolutely horribly by the cops in large part because he was a young person who owned a, a nice car. Um, and it, it kind of permanently, I don't know, uh, gave him a change of attitude. What would you suggest for someone like that to what should their attitude toward law enforcement be? If they were, if they were treated poorly, how can someone like that change around to being kind of supportive my cops right or wrong my cops how how might i counsel my friend you know i would tell your friend to suck it up buttercup because we've all got to give a little for our freedoms and sometimes things are going to happen that we don't like and we just got to suck it up and so you know the fact that he he had to you know was a little inconvenienced for the rest of this country to be free oh well who knows? He could have been a drug dealer driving a nice sports car and being young. And the cops have to have the ability and the authority to make sure that he's not, because if he was out selling drugs, whew, that could ruin everything in our country. I mean, that could be that could be like the Jenga game, that one piece that comes out and the entire system collapses because he might be out there selling drugs. OK, well, thank you so much. And uh, I, I really appreciate you coming on and uh, Enforcers Association of America.org. Um, thank you for sharing some very controversial ideas. I um, appreciate you being on. And thank you for helping me stimulate my brain and realize that I need to keep this fight going even harder. <laughs>